80,000 a day if you're a woman, 65,000 a day if you're a man. What am I talking about? Well, that's how many thoughts per day the psychologists, the scientists, I don't know who figures that out or how, tell us, go on each and every day. But here's the factor that really makes a big difference in every life for you in every moment is the fact 95%, yeah, 95% of those big numbers, they're running through your subconscious. You don't even know you're thinking them because you've been thinking those same thoughts out of your awareness. That's what's been running your life. That's why you're here with me today to find out what are the invisible forces driving your life in every moment. Well, let's whittle down those numbers and take a look. Okay, so a woman who has to multitask in taking care of the kids and the home and everything I'm talking about before women went to work because went to work. If you've ever been a stay-at-home mom, you know that's the toughest job in the whole world. So I meant working outside the home, which for many women is something of a decrease in stress. But that's a talk for another time right now. Talking about the fact that 95% of those 80,000 thoughts a day, well, that's 760,000 thoughts a day running, 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 running out of your awareness, keeping you so stuck. Because that's what you're acting on. Because those are the thoughts that you're believing. They make your belief system and you're acting on them without even knowing that's what's going on. And if you're a man at 65,000 thoughts a day and you're losing 61,750, that leaves you with 3,250 thoughts a day to make some new choices for new behaviors in your life. Hmm. The thing is, what's going on in your subconscious, they're not new thoughts. You thought the same thoughts yesterday, and the day before, and the week before, and the year before, and probably many decades before you probably had these thoughts planted in your subconscious mind, starting in your early childhood. And because they've been there so long, you believe them. And because you believe them, you don't even give a second thought to them. And you act on those thoughts because the emotions are attached to them. That's why your behavior can't change. And you know you want to change. But until you discover what are those thoughts running you in your subconscious, change can't happen. They're in the way. They're taking up your energy even though you're not aware of it happening. So what can you do? Well, one thing, you can take a look at how your life looks and say, what would I have to be thinking and feeling for my life to turn out this way every day? And that's when you get to notice, hmm, so that must be what I'm thinking. Now, if you've ever heard of the Enneagram, that's an ancient Sufi method for explaining the different personality types. There are nine personality types. I'm not going to give you a lesson because I studied it for 10 years. It's a lot to study. What I'm going to do is share an example with you. I am what's called a flaming four on the Enneagram. What does a four focus on? What drives my behaviors when it's happening out of my awareness? Somebody is a four. They're, we tend to be artist types. 
but we also can be very sensitive types. Yeah, that's the right word. Sensitive could get our hurt, our feelings hurt easily until we realize, oh, that's what we're doing in our mind. And I can choose not to do that anymore. So for a four, the focus is on what's wrong and what's missing. And boy, I look back at my life and all the beliefs that I've been living, all the beliefs that I've thought were facts. Sure enough, what's wrong, what's missing, which means if you're a four like me, you're going back in your past and you're finding all the hurts in there or a little bit less, but the other possibility is saying, this is what I'm going to do in the future and it's going to be different. Well, it's not going to be different until you clean out the majority of thoughts that are in your past. Well, how are you going to do that? It's all awareness. Because that comes into my awareness, when I catch myself looking at what's wrong or what's missing, that's the whole point. I catch myself. So when you figure out what's going on for you, you catch yourself. And you say, whoa, enough of that. And you stop it with conscious awareness. You stop the thought. And when you're not stopping and dismissing it, because what you resist persists, you're stopping the thought from hurting you. And instead, oh, are you ready for this? You welcome that thought, that belief in. You allow yourself to experience it instead of suppressing it, instead of ignoring it, you allow it in. The way to eliminate what you don't want in your life is to stop resisting it and allow it and experience it and feel it. And guess what happens when you do that? can't hear you. You can go down below and tell me. What happens is it actually disappears. Not just for the moment, but permanently. And the reason for that is you don't have one single thought like that. Remember the neurons that fire together? They wire together. So you could have hundreds, you could have thousands of thoughts connected to the one you just discovered. So when you allow it in, when you experience it and you actually are able to eliminate it because you stopped resisting it, hundreds, maybe even thousands of thoughts in the same line, in the same genre, is that the best word there? They'll all disappear. Not temporarily, they'll all be gone. When my kids were growing up and they did a behavior that mm, wasn't something I wanted them to have as a regular part of their behavior. So I grab them and I'd hug them so tight and I would tell them, we're squeezing out the monster because that's not you that's doing that behavior. There's just this monster having that kind of energy in you and we gotta squeeze it out. We hug real tight. And even with little kids, when you hug them, they're hugging you back real tight. Okay, so then I say, okay, monster's gone now. Oh, but there's this space inside you, this gaping space where the monster used to be. How are we going to fill it? I know. 
We're going to fill it with love. So there's more major hugging going on to fill in the space vacated by the monster that was doing the behavior that we didn't want part of their being. So it's always, and do this for yourself, and always separate a behavior, which is just a pattern, which is just a habit, from who you are. I happen to believe. No, I don't just believe it. I know that there's good in every person, even the people you can't stand. And you know what? When you look for it, you're going to see it because it's there in everyone. And when you look for it, you find it, and you nurture it. And when you nurture what you want to see in somebody, they show up that way for you, because you're always going to see what you expect to see, and what you accept is possible from that person. So you're taking care of yourself by noticing behaviors that you're not happy with in you, and you're taking care of people you care about by noticing other behaviors in them that you really desire. Whew. That was a lot of information I threw at you, and I hope my personal stories made some sense to you. So, what are you going to do today when you're done watching this? You can go down below and share one thought that because you're taking this and it's hitting home, which is always in your heart, it's never up here in your mind, it's always in your heart. What's that one behavior that you have thought for sure it's true? Because you believed it so long. And now you're going to welcome it. You're going to feel through it until it's gone. Truly gone. And it's going to change your whole life. One thing at a time. Thank you so much for joining me here today. For Let's Get Metaphysical. Connecting Heart and mind. And I'm here to assist you in discovering the invisible forces and the thoughts you've connected to deep feelings. And that's what's driving you. And by discovering them, you get to change how your world looks. Because resisting is never, ever, ever <laughs> It's never going to go away. And that's why you've had a lifetime pattern of things you don't want in your life. And remember to join our Facebook group. You can make a new friend. Ask me questions. I want to know where you're coming from. And what you want to know more about. What's been puzzling to you. And that's why you're here listening to this show right now. And, well, yeah, you can join our community, meet other people like you, all while you're supporting this podcast and this show. It takes a lot of work to do it, and the work really pays off when we get to expand by sharing with others. And in the community, we get to do that. And when you go to our site or write in your podcast player, and you write a review, you're again helping us to reach more people. Because what I guarantee is there are lots of people, people who you know, people in your world, who want to know, how do I stop creating what I don't want in my life? How do I stop creating what I want to avoid to keep showing up? Those are your friends. You think of two friends right now, because I bet you can, and tune them into our show. And if you go over to our show site, you can watch the video or listen to any of our 128 so far episodes. 
remember that you can always get a free trial at Audible. Well, Audible is not just a place for audiobooks. Audible has courses. It has exclusive podcasts. It has magazines. You can't even imagine all that's there. And that's why they're offering you, through my site, a 30-day free trial to download the audio book of your choice. And I highly recommend, and there are a gazillion books I can recommend, but this one I'm going to recommend, The Greatest Secret. And the reason I'm recommending that is because Rhonda Byrne, who you probably know from The Secret, and a gazillion of her books that she's written, but she always quotes all these people. And I found through that book very many people to follow and to explore, to get what it turns out to be the same message. Anyway, do go grab her audio book. You can get it for free. And look around, because you'll find stuff that interests you. Guarantee it. And also, again, I want to thank you for being here and remind you to enjoy, right here in your heart, enjoy every moment. It's a choice. Then that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, because it's inside of you that everything happens. Nothing happens out there. You can't experience sound out there. You can't experience what you're seeing or touching or feeling. You feel that hug inside. And I look forward to seeing you here next time.